Hello, I'm Paul Elliott. Welcome to Fourth Bank Stadium as Stirling University hosts Gretna 2008 in the Scottish Lowland League. Gretna come into this one in second place, but with Visco ride hot on their heels. Stirling Uni, meanwhile, are in fifth place, and a victory today could put them in, within touching distance of Spartans, who are currently in fourth. The last time these two met, it was a 1 0 draw, but what will it be today? Let's find out and head over to the action. Cheers, Paul. Thank you very much indeed. And this one's got hallmarks of a very good low league game. Gretna, who have done well to be up inside the top two in this division. Still University under Shelley Kea. Former Arsenal A's managers came back to Scotland and managed in the Lone League with Stirling and done a terrific job as well. And at home, at fourth bank, they may well fancy the chances. Gretna higher up in the league, but Stirling University with a decent squad. Both sides like to play a bit of football. And the few that are trickling in to watch this should hopefully see a decent game. If he's just checking everything's in order. And off we go then. Stirling University in the green. Gretna getting us underway. It's lonely football from Fourth Bank. So the free kick in. Comes through to Milligan. Still Milligan. Oh, and then goals and the keeper has got his feet in the way. Marshall done very well there to react. Milligan in really well. Found so much space. Ball switched out towards Callum Burns. Gets round Inglis with ease. It's still Callum Burns. Oh, that is a fantastic goal. For Stirling University, nine minutes on the clock. And a solo goal of the highest quality. Callum Burns has kept on going round two. Great defenders, then goals in Addison. And smash. Stirling University won. Great in a 2008 nil. Had a glance on, but I think Graham went across there just to clear it away. A little bit shaky. Good great in a 2008 defence after conceding fairly early on. And the quick throwing option. Here's Williams. It's Williams! A little speculative. Bit of confidence. But why do that right hand post in the end? For Sterling. Oh, in the quick corner, taking an exercise well with space. Came off a black and white jersey. Here's Folds. Oh, and Drummond! He stabbed it in! It's a second goal in three minutes! And the Gretna defence was completely static there. Folds just managed to mug the ball off the defender. And Drummond to poke it in for two. Inside 12 minutes. With Gretna. Milligan. It's Ian Anderson. And stopped by Marshall. Comfortable enough. Ryan. Not really cleared away at all there by Fold. Still with Gretna. Again, Ingalls onto Slattery. Still Slattery onto Long Cake, and he's managed to stab it in. Brandon Long Cake, two minutes before half time. I'm sure Shelley Kerr will not be happy with that. The home side conceded two minutes before the break, and for both sides, it changes the half time team talks. Hope for Grenada 2008. Stuart's room side. I've got one back. Long kick. 
Anderson. It's over the bar. Positive stuff in the start of the second half for Gretna. Tying the flick on through and McCafferty to Geddes. It's still Geddes. Murray's hand in the way. And Graham punts it to safety. Good stop from the away keeper. Addison's corner. Anderson was one up there, but comfortable for Marshall. McCaffrey switches it out to Kelly. Kelly in space. Bonner with a tap in. And that may well secure three points for the home side. The two substitutes combine. Kelly. With the space, great ball across to kill it was initially from a Cafferty. Oh, Lewis Bonner makes it 3 1 to Stirling University. 16 minutes to go. It's not a really good tee kick, but that's spectacular. And it's over the bar in the end from Slattery. Right? Had a quiet game, but that was almost the best goal of the lot. And there's a final whistle and a cracking game. And for Southern University, a big win against the side. And they're second in the league in Gretna 2008. Still made a cracking start, two goals in the first 12 minutes. Callum Burns with the opening goal, followed by James Drummond. There was some poor defending there, it has to be said. Gretna had the lifeline through Brandon. Long kick just before half time. But uh, despite uh, even Stephen's second half, it was 3 1 with 60 minutes to go thanks to Lewis Bonner. So Gretna have lost ground in the league table. Uh, with Edinburgh City winning, although they are in command with three games in hand. Anyway, Gretna 11 points behind, and they've got East Kilbride, Spartans, and now Stirling University breathing down their necks. Second place gets a spot in the Petrofrac at Challenge Cup next season, along with the uh, league winners. So uh, there is something to play for there. And East Kilbride, Spartans, Stirling University, all within close contention of Gretna. Let's get some post match reaction from inside the tunnel. Uh, from both sides, let's start off with Stirling University. Paul Elliott's down there with the manager of the home side, Shelley Kerr. Shelley, big performance today. How good are those three points? Oh, it, brilliant. I mean, I've said to the lads all season that when they get the ball down and play, then, you know, they're very, very difficult to beat. And I thought we started the game really, really well today. Um, although we had to kind of um, be switched on. They had a few free kicks, early doors and corner set plays, and um, we had to be switched on. But after the first kind of five, ten minutes, I thought we got into the swing of the game and we actually controlled it. And then we were disappointed to concede right almost on half time, which is never, never a good time to concede a goal. You mentioned the start there. Just how pleasing was that start? It was quite a whirlwind, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. But you know, we had a good team, and um, the guy we've got a fit, fit group of players here, and they can when they keep you know the tempo high in the game, then you know other teams struggle with that because they don't train as much, and you know it's a no-brainer if you train more, then you're going to be fitter. But they're a talented group of players as well. Yeah, the first half was very slick, football was very good, the second half with the, the weather as well got a wee bit more dogged. So what does this say about the character of the team? Yeah, it's something that I've been harping on about all season and you get that with young players. We've probably got the youngest team in the league, um, you know, hence the university students, so they are young. Um, and, and it's the one thing that we've tried to build is a bit of character and you know it's, it's not the first time that a team's come back into the game and then we've kind of, you know, we've actually then got on top of the game again so it, it, it tells you a lot about them and the conditions as well the conditions didn't really suit us um, in the second half but again we grinded out the result and um, weathered the storm a wee bit and then we got that third goal which really effectively killed the game off. Costing quite a lot of problems from set pieces and from the wings is this part of the tactics? 
Um, well, that pitch out there is huge and it's probably one of the biggest pitches in the league. So when we play at home, we do try to switch the play a wee bit and, you know, we, we try to kind of suck teams in and then come out, um, you know, the other side and use the width. So I thought we'd done that really, really well. Um, and saying that, I think Gretna are a really good team. Um, they set up really well against us and it was difficult for us at times. So, sometimes they play with a, you know, a, a narrow midfield and um, so I thought our three lads in there, especially in the first half, done really well against them. So what's the ambition for the rest of the season? Just to climb the table. I think, you know, it's always been, you know, I think when I came into the team, you know, we were kind of... It was that little period of time where a new manager comes in, you know, they hadn't had any points in the league, but we've steadily climbed and, you know, it's consistency and, and we've got that now. And, you know, it's just, for me, it's all about building for next season. We, you know, when you're involved with a university team, once the guys get their degrees, they move on to bigger and better things and then we rebuild again. So, um, you know, it's, no, it's like an exciting time because I think the young players that have come in have done brilliant. Well done. Thanks for that. Cheers. Cheers. Callum, it's a big win today. You must be delighted. No, we are. Um, I think lately we've been playing really well and today was quite important. You've seen the conditions, it got tough. It was important to keep uh, trying to play and get the win. Big win again, so it keeps the momentum going. Conditions were very tough. Just how tough was it? Oh, it was really tough. I mean, to start with, the pitch was really good. It was wet, nice and slick for passing, but as the rain started to come down, it was really bad. And then when we came out for the second half, there was a couple of puddles lying here and there, so it got tough, but you need to dig deep and deal with that, you know. You got off to a bit of a whirlwind start. How pleasing was that? Oh, it was good. It was good. I think in our last four or five games, we've really came out of the traps well. Um, something we were looking to improve on for the start of the season. Um, so, no, it was, it's good to start well in games. It, it gives you an advantage, really. Your goal was a bit special. Talk us through that one. <laughs> I've been due it. Um, the last couple of weeks, I've missed a couple of sitters. Uh, I'm sure some of the lads would like to back up. But, no, it was good to get a goal. It's always good to score. And with a left peg as well, you can't complain. Manager saying it's a bit of character about this team. What's the what's the dressing room like? No, it's good. It's it's all good lads. You know, we're all quite young. Bar Geds, who's old, <laughs> but no, we're all we're all quite young, and it's it's good guys. And I think lately, um, teams maybe with the start we had at the start of the season, teams maybe thought we were going to be a bit of pushover this season. But like you mentioned there, the guys have got a good bit of character about us now, we're getting a bit form. Um, you know, it's it's a good team to be a part of. How well can you do this season? I think we can do as well as we can. I think the league's over. Uh, if we're being honest here, um, I think Edinburgh City have, have stole it. But in terms of us, we want to finish strong. Uh, on both fronts, we play in the University League as well. So, and the Cup. Um, so, no, we want to finish strong and keep the momentum going and finish high up, as high up the league as we possibly can. I think that's what it's about for us. Well done, cheers. Thanks very much. Tough game today. What's your analysis of that one? It was, um, but when you concede... You know, the first goal was a good goal, the second goal bad, third goal very poor, and the fact that we should have defended a lot better with, with you know, without the ball. Um, it's disappointing against a top side like this, you know, when, when you give them opportunities, they'll, they'll punish you, and they did. Um, you mentioned uh, the early goals there, just how tough was it to lose those early goals? It was bad, we knew that, you know, how they would set out to play, but it was... You know, again, the guy cut in from the wide right with his left foot and put the ball in the top corner. You know, again, can you defend that better? I don't think so. You know, I mean, you take your hands up and you think, well, we maybe should have defended it a lot better when he did come inside and, and done our full back. But the strike was, you know, a great strike right in the top corner. Um, but the second goal was just not acceptable. You know, when a guy, well, two, you know, are going out to take a short corner and we stand and watch them. You know, you, you, you don't expect that on a Sunday morning youth football, never mind this level. And, you know, obviously the cross coming in goal, um, which is very disappointing to give a team of that status two goals and you're left chasing the game after that. But fair, fair credit to our lads, we came back in the game and we scored a goal just before half time, which, you know, put a bit of more complex on the game in towards the second half. But you can't give goals away like that at this level and expect to win a game of football. It just can't happen. What was it you said to them at half time? Because they came out fighting for the second half. Well, it, it, we just changed a little bit, you know, and, and again, you know, we didn't think there was nothing wrong. You know, the, the only thing wrong was, you know, switching off um, and, and not doing individual jobs properly that they were told to do. Um, and we got punished, simple as that. Um, but at this level of football, you, you can't switch off because it banked in the back of the net. Um, and the third goal w was basic example of that. You know, when we've got... We're in the final third of the park, 
the ball comes out, one of my strikers doesn't put a tackle in where he should have done. Within two seconds, the ball's in the opposition. Well, the ball is in our net. Um, but you can't do that at this level. You can't. You know, one minute, you know, like one second, we're in a goal scoring opportunity to maybe level the game. Within 10 seconds, we're 3 1 down. Is it just a case of losing goals at bad times? No, I think it was just losing goals in general at all times. You know what I mean? You you can't switch off and switch on when you want to. Um, and that today, you know, summed it up for me, I think, was bad decisions in wrong places at wrong times that cost us the goals. It's been a good season so far. So um, what are you building on here? Well, we're building on the future. You know what I mean? Like when I come back, you know, um, this season, it, it was to better than what we did last season. And, and, and if we are, you know, we're progressing the right way. Um, but we've deserved to be sitting in second position for a long period because we went on a great run. Um, but it's now all about what's the mentality of the likes of the players now when obviously the league's basically won by Edinburgh City and good luck to them because they've been a great side all season. Um, but we have to keep fighting because second place is a, pot, a big pot. You know, it's not a case of just finishing second. Second has a big pot to go with it. Um, so it's not a case we're going to pick the season out because we're in two cups as well. Um, and I've told the players that. Um, but, you know, we're building and building and I'm, I'm happy the way we are progressing. Can you hold on to second? Well, I don't know what the results was today. I don't know. Um, you know, we were in a good position. East Kilbride, when they win their games in hand, or game in hand, would have gotten level. Um, but we've dropped two, three points today, sorry. So... Again, we've just got to keep going, you know, and build up and keep getting the points on the board to finish second. But that's the aim. It's not to finish as high as possible. It's to finish second, you know, because we've deserved to be there where we are. Um, and I ain't going to let it peter out. That it will not be acceptable. Cheers. Thanks for that. No problem. Okay.